In this video, we are going to talk about polygonal modeling and polygonal objects in Rhino. So we saw in the previous video how we can transform different types of objects. We already used some sub D object, which are polygonal objects and also some mesh solids to transform them. So you can use in Rhino all these different types of modeling. Now the standard one in Rhino is NURBS modeling. Now let's go and see some more additional information. So real quick, NURBS means non-uniform rational base planes. And we already talked a little bit about this, but essentially you are working here, starting with curves, then you will create surfaces and then from there you're gonna attach all the surfaces together and you're gonna create your model which is gonna be a NURBS model. Now a NURBS model usually looks really curvy and soft and doesn't have edges, doesn't have like facetted uh, surfaces. You have these nice clean curvy surfaces and this is the characteristic of NURBS. So you have a really simple uh, wireframe, a really simple structure, but then you have this really wonderful and nice curvy objects. Now in the polygonal model everything is based on a, the polygon. So the polygon could be a triangle, could be four-sided, five-sided, depends on what you need to do, but mostly you will find four-sided and triangles. And you can see that when you create a polygonal model, unless you increase the number of polygons a lot, you're gonna see these phases. So your model is gonna look really uh, faceted and uh, like subdivided. You will have, you will see all these phases. Unless you smooth everything out with a smooth effect. Now remember that the smooth is just an effect. Now what you have, it's always phases. You have a structure composed of many polygons or phases. Now, when you have polygons and faces, you have a mesh object. And in reality, when, for example, we want to print something in 3D, we're going to use polygons. We are not going to use NURBS. NURBS are always uh, converted into polygons if you want to print 3D, but also if you want to export, for example, let's say for a video game or for a 3D real-time application or for CAD or BIM or many other software out there like 3D Studio Max, Cinema 4D, Maya, Revit and so on. You, they all work with polygons, they all work with mesh objects. So yes, we can do really wonderful and nice and clean objects in Rhino, but in the end we will have to export them and convert these into polygons. So when you convert or when you create a polygon model, you have to choose the number of polygons. So you have two main categories basically. One is called low poly, the other one is called high poly, but you can also, of course, have like extra poly or super poly. It depends on how many details you want to add to your model. Now, usually low poly is used, for example, for video games or for real-time rendering, something that cannot be too slow. So when you create really complex models, those tend to slow down the scene when you want to play it in real time. Think about the frame per second and the uh, video games, you know, that's the same logic. So you usually use low poly when you have to go into another application. Just look at Blender and Maya, Cinema 4D, and so on. Now, you can see the edges here. You can see the faces real clear when you use low poly, but when you apply a material textures that's gonna be a little bit masked it's gonna be a little bit covered so you have a really low poly object there but with a nice texture and like nice unwrapping you will have a nice model as well so you can also use a software called armor paint which is software to create really nice textures and you will find the course and how to install it and use it in the channel. I definitely suggest you give that a look. Now you can see that we are talking about really complex models here and this is the high poly models that are usually used in movies or TV series or when a certain model cinematics 
when a certain model needs to be really realistic and it has to have a lot of details like wrinkled hairs and so on. Well, you will find a lot of examples on the web and here you can also give a look to another software called ZBrush, which is pretty popular and that's, that, that's called not modeling but sculpting. So it's like the next step into 3D modeling. So you get the overall look and the overall model with the polygon modeling and then you move into sculpting and you will find sculpting tools also Cinema 4D or uh, Blender and so on. So let's create a new file here. I'm going to call this Lesson 13 and I will go directly here into the Mesh toolbar. So here we find all the Mesh tools and right here we find the primitives. We already saw some of these so I'm just going to create a really simple one to explain how you can set up a mesh and how you can change it and how this will affect also transformations and other actions. For example here you will be asked to insert the count. So by count we are inserting the subdivisions in the object. So if we say for example 2 for the x, for the epsilon and the z, let's create here a first object. And let's make this shaded. Okay, you can see that this looks pretty much similar to a NURBS, but let's create also a solid NURBS, so you can kind of see the difference. Okay, so this looks even simpler than this in terms of structure, but what if we bend this or we transform this using any other transform tool? So let's go for the bend because it's pretty visible. So I'm gonna start here the spline and going to bend this. There you go. And same thing with the other. Now you can already tell the difference. First one looks straight, it doesn't look like a nice curve and this is because of the subdivisions. So we need to create a model with more subdivisions. So we're gonna increase the number of polygons or faces. So let's go back here to the, again, uh, mesh tools and let's create another one. Okay, this time, before we create it, let's set here eight and eight and eight in all the directions and let's create it again. Okay, now you can see I have more subdivisions. So if I do again the transform, I'm gonna have something more curvy. But if you see here the nerves, and if you compare it with uh, the polygon model with a lot of subdivisions, you can still see here that is, it looks edgy. You can see the edges here. Here, it, everything is smooth. Now I want to create a copy.